Hi. On this slide, uh, I want to look at levels of, of sophistication as far as how a customer might buy commodity goods from us. Uh, earlier, we talked about uh, kind of level one buying, which is the transactional game, where it's all sort of a margin war, and uh, customers have uh, narrowed the field down to two or three good suppliers, and then they kind of do periodic price, che price checks. And the, on, the, on the flip side, we're always trying to sneak the margin up. And that's fine, but sometimes people say, well, wait a minute, maybe there's a better way. Uh, we might, for example, go and, and pick a niche, tune our service to that niche, and go out and say, look, we have service excellence, and here are how some of our service aspects are lowering one or more of the 11 elements of total procurement cost that you have. Now, total procurement cost, and we'll look at this model later on, is a, uh, uh, it, it's a, it's a model that is sort of silo-specific. It kind of looks at a, at a buyer's reality or their, their little four-wall environment. They're not, they're not that concerned about uptime economics or customer satisfaction retention economics, which we see further down the slide. But uh, if we can go out and basically convince customers that we do have uh, better tuned, distinctive service excellence, even unconditionally guaranteed, that's how we could go out, justify saying, well, actually, we deserve last look and a little bit higher price. Sure, our price is higher, but our total procurement cost value to you is, is lower. Uh, and actually, because our, our service value is so fa fantastically reliable, maybe you might want to consider marrying us. In other words, why do you keep uh, two or three other guys in the game to, to buy suboptimally when you could just give us all the volume? And if you did that, we could work together to get the price down even lower because our cost of serve drops too. But if you go and say to a buyer, hey, here are all the ways we're going to reduce your, your, your TPC, total procurement costs, they'll think, that's my job. I, I don't really have any interest in liquidating my job. Uh, nor do I really see into the factory or do I see into the vans and people doing work as far as if we don't have the right stuff at the right place at the right time, how does that affect the downtime of our people? So ideally, we would be able to go and say, look, we don't just sell product to you. We sell it to you at the lowest total procurement cost and through you, giving you the best uptime economics. So if you look at the total hours you pay your employees as opposed to how many hours they're actually doing what they're supposed to, this number actually goes up because our service is so reliable. And that's another reason why you'd say, well, why don't you just marry us and give us all the business that we could possibly take care of? So that would be a second sort of chronological dimension, total procurement cost first, then chronologically we're about uptime economics. Then what happens is if we have great uptime economics, then as far as the next step in the value chain, maybe it's the customer's actual customer, they are going to experience better service experience. They're going to get more on-time uh, uh, service that's done right the first time, and that's going to make them happy, so they're going to come back again and again, and they're going to tell their friends, that's referral economics in addition to rent, retention economics, and they may give you even more business, so you have penetration economics. So those, that's a third chronological dimension of, of what a supply chain, uh, VP of supply chain might be looking at. And then lastly, if we can work together hand in glove to do all these things, that does not mean that the inner business process relationship, you know, the IBPR, I call it here, uh, can't continuously be improved. After all, who historically has taken upon themselves to say, let me go out and flowchart all that's going on between us, the distributor, and the customer. And flow, once we flowchart it, to look at it and say, has this been tuned from the perspective of both sides to improve the absolute efficiency and effectiveness of what we're doing? And the answer is no one's been doing that. Everybody's in their own little silo focused on their one or two metrics. And so nobody, we've missed the, 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 the big picture opportunity. So if we can do continuous improvement not only will the math economics get better for both of us, but what happens is we really indirectly are measuring uh, how much work it takes to, to work hand in glove and create uh, this great value. And 
therefore, in a sense, the switching costs. So if a competitor would come in a year and a half from now and say, hey, I'll do everything they're doing and I'll give you 5% less. The, the customer would laugh in their face and say, no, no, you don't understand. We've worked 18 months, you know, hand in glove with you know, our team, their team, whatever to achieve this. There's a lot more than meets the eye. And so they're not going to throw us out for a low price than have a bad switching cost experience. So we will now go into all the details of these particular uh, supply chain economic building block memes. Thanks.